Shannon, do the Niners have a quarterback problem? No, no, they don't have a quarterback problem. But the thing that I was concerned about, you remember we had this question, Stephen A., and they asked even after he scored 42 points against the Cowboys, was he elite? I said, no, I don't believe he's elite. That doesn't mean he can't become elite. Okay. I said, I want to see him in a game where every throw matters, where every possession matters. And what we've seen, if you go back and look at that graphic, they're only scoring 17 points, and their defense was giving up 13 points during that five-game winning streak. So if the defense was doing what they were continuously doing, we wouldn't notice this. But what has happened is that his flaws got accentuated okay. because now every throw matters, every possession matters, and we see this. The turnovers start to happen because now all all of a sudden, he has to get in there, and he has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. He has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these guys, and he's been unable to do that. No, I, I agree with Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. I believe everything that they need mm -hmm. is in that building. Okay. The question is moving forward. Mm -hmm. Can the defense that's taken a step mm -hmm. back, and it's clearly they've taken a step back, mm -hmm. can they right their wrongs and now prop him up again? Because yeah. now that Christian McCaffrey can't take a two-yard route and go 80, mm -hmm. because Debo has been out and IU, they can't take those big jailbreak screens and go to the house, it seems to me that this offense has become very pedestrian, very mundane. Mm -hmm. But I agree. What they need is in the building. But Brock Purdy hasn't, and he never was elite. I'm okay. not saying down the road two, right. three years from now he right. can't be elite, right. but he's not even close to being elite. Well, let me tell you something, Shannon Sharp. We, you and I respectfully disagree. We're going to start this Monday off right. I don't know what the hell you talk about. You mean <laughs> don't have a, everything you describe is a quarterback problem. The fact of the matter is if you got a quarterback that got to go up against Joe Burrow and he can't answer the call in your mind, right. that is a quarterback problem. Now, I understand Kittle had 149 yards receiving. Ayuk had 109 yards receiving. Purdy threw for 365 yards from a statistical perspective. Perspective, it looks like a pretty good right. day. But let me throw this out at you. And by the way, I'll throw Purdy this. Trent Williams is out. That's a, that's a, that, you know, that's mm -hmm. a big time. You got your left tackle. He's right. out. Debo Samuels, particularly in short screen situations, he's out. So that's your security blanket that's gone from that. We get that. Mm -hmm. But here's the flip side to it. Knowing that, you've got to find a way to step up. I'm looking at Brock Purdy right now. In games where they are tied or trailing in the second half, this brother's got two pass, two, two touchdown passes, seven interceptions. we got to pay, take that into consideration. With Debo, he's completed 71% of his passes, eight touchdowns, zero interceptions, 121 passer rating. Without Debo, 65% completion percentage, four TD passes, five interceptions, 82.7 passer rating. That's a damn near 40% drop off. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this. I understand that Purdy can play. I don't want Dio. I don't want you to interpret it as me saying that brother can't play. He doesn't deserve to be the starting quarterback or whatever the case may be. But when we look at one dude being gone, but you got Ayuk and you got McCaffrey and you yeah. got Kittle and you got Kyle Shanahan and because that one dude is out, you got problems? You're a problem. I'm sorry. How much do you need as a quarterback? There's a plenty of teams in the National Football League, Shannon and Dio, that don't have those, those complimentary pieces right. that I just highlighted. They manage. Right. If you are Brock Purdy, you got to find a way to step up. I think he'll overcome it. Don't get me wrong. But in yeah. the moment, because the list is fluid, the list is fluid. Deal. In the moment, you, gotta, you can't have those problems. Deal, before you go, let me say this. Sure. What they what the teams have done is mm -hmm. that they put him in a situation where, like you said, those stats when he's behind or tied. Okay. So now he can't relax. Every throw gets heightened. Okay. Every possession gets heightened. Mm -hmm. And so now, whereas before, he's been in the catbird right. seat. He got to dictate. Right. But you told me pressure breaks pipes. Yes. You use that line all the time. Yes. So all you're yes. highlighting yes. for me yes. is that, excuse me, he's been inconvenienced a little bit, but you got to find a way to adapt he, and overcome, particularly he, with the weapons he has, Shannon. If he's what, if he's what D.O. has been telling us he is, okay, now it, should, D. it shouldn't all be right, a problem. All right, right D.O.? Okay. There we go. That's a good point. I like how you switch it to D.O. That's good. That's good. No good quarterback job. problem. No quarterback problem, but it, it, they should be concerned with over the past couple weeks how many passes the defense is getting their hands on. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, conversation, elite or not, and I said he's elite because his production is elite. And I said, you're elite one of two ways. You got guys out and you're finding a way to overcome that or you have elite production in what you're being asked to do. And Brock Purdy did. And Shannon, you remember I said the superpower, like the very intriguing thing about Brock Purdy was he was letting the ball go in such an anticipation fashion before cats were even getting into the top of their routes yeah. and he wasn't giving the ball away. And I said, that was wildly unique. Like, that was very rare to have that kind of anticipation throwing up over defenders and not having interceptions. 
And that has changed, and I have to be honest about that. And that has, that, that, that's the difference. And it's, I mean, he threw two interceptions yesterday. Now, the one that Jermaine Pratt picks off is a sick interception. The interception by Logan Wilson, that's a bad throw in read by uh, Brock Purdy. He also had another play earlier in this game where the very similar situation should have been picked off as well. A couple balls defensively that got batted down last week and then three weeks ago. So, again, I, I think the concern has to be, too many passes the defense is getting their hands on over the course of the last three weeks. And Kyle Shanahan has to figure out, can Brock Purdy be that same, oh my gosh, he threw it before the guys are ready, anticipation right. thrower, and get back to not giving the ball away. The only pushback I'd have with you, is Steve, Stephen A., is this. When okay. you say, well, if he can't go toe-to-toe with Joe Burrow, that's a problem. There's like three people on planet Earth that can. So we <laughs> well, can't well, – well, we like, we can't, we can't burden time, this time, young time, man with that no, right no, now. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I no. disagree with you. Let me explain. Let me explain. Respectfully, I disagree with you. Here's why. Because when we talk about the other parts needed in order to win a Super Bowl championship, and we recognize you not only as a Super Bowl contender, but one of the Super Bowl favorites, mm -hmm. I got to be able to look at you as a quarterback and feel like, yo, you can get it done. And that's really what this comes down to. I'm not saying go to toe-to-toe -to -toe for Burrow as if you're better than him. Okay. I get that. But what I'm saying is if I got – if you tell – how many quarterbacks, if you're talking about an NFL quarterback on a Super Bowl, a legitimate Super Bowl contender, mm -hmm. Shannon – and you're looking at Kittle and Ayuk, all right, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're looking at these – and Christian McCaffrey with Debo coming back. I'm saying to myself, I got to be able to look at you and go like this. You're not a problem. Right. You're not going to be the Achilles right. heel. And, and Brock Purdy's got to make sure he's not that person. And as of recent, that hasn't been the case. Because he doesn't have the Patrick Mahomes or this uh, uh, Josh Allen arm talent, he has to throw with so much anticipation. And when it's, when it's clicking, he's like, did you see the guy wasn't even out of his break and the ball is halfway there? Yeah. But also, when that guy doesn't clear, you're going to hit him right between his numbers. And that's what we're seeing a lot of move. Shane, Shane, spot on. If you guys remember the throw against Dallas, remember he, he layers that yeah. Debo ball in? The Debo, for the, it's yes. that same. It's that same play that you are referencing mm -hmm. for a couple of those interceptions. Yeah. There's no questions asked. I think if you're Kyle Shanahan, it's two things right now. I do have to sit here and give a ton of credit to Lou Anarumo, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals. I love Kyle Shanahan. I think he's one of the best offensive minds in the last 30 or 40 years. Lou Anarumo was the better coach when it came to the plan yesterday. And he was dropping people. Shannon, what he was doing was putting five guys at the line of scrimmage, yeah. only rushing three of them, dropping eight. So it was taking a lot of those underneath throws away. And so, therefore, right. some of those kind of forces downfield. I think if you're Kyle, you got to sit there and go, okay, why have some of those interceptions or, again, tipped balls? There's been more tipped balls that guys have gotten their – tipped passes Started than guys have gotten their hands on more than interceptions. Why is that happening? Is it is it? Are we trying to force the ball too much? Are they taking underneath coverage away? Do we really miss Debo that much? So I don't think they have this quarterback problem, but I do think it's fair to say it's concerning that so many passes have been touched by the defense over the last three weeks. Well, we also got to be concerned about San Francisco's defense as well. Yes, I mean we got. Yes. I mean we we, yeah. we we got. I mean, listen. No pressure. Steve Wilkes is a guy that was the head coach in Carolina for one year, finished six and six. Obviously, he took over there, and we all thought that he deserved an opportunity to really show what he could do. And obviously, uh, we looked at it and, and, and we said, okay, now he's going to be the defensive coordinator of San Francisco. And you're looking at them over the last few weeks. That is not what we expected right. to see from the San Francisco 49ers. Not from their defense as right. defensive coordinator. That's something that needs to be addressed. And for the most part, that is the exact same defense that he inherited from D'Amico Ryan. That's right. And yeah. we know what D'Amico did with that defense last year. There we go. To make a, to another point, Dio, what you said is yes, that sir. when they drop eight in coverage, now all of a sudden you need arm talent to fit that ball in the tight windows. It's yeah. not so much anticipation because the guys are already dispersed. So you mm -hmm. need to be able to drive that ball into those narrow windows outside the numbers or inside the hashes. And so he, so he can't do that. Purdy can't really do that. Well, he's going to he needs to be in a situation. Yeah. He needs to be in a situation where he yeah. has the lead so he can dictate, Kyle right. Shanahan can dictate right. what the defense does as opposed to defense dictating what he does. Right. Two yeah, I think that's Shannon's point. Two, two things trailer. on the yeah. defense. Absolutely the Bosa holdout is starting to show itself because Nick Bosa is just not dominating games the way he no. used to. He just – right now he's not. And I think he's got to get himself back into like playing world, whatever. And the second thing is – the thing about San Francisco's defense that was so sick last year was there was no weakness. 
Like, no matter how you tried to defense offensively, you would watch tape and be like, who can I attack? I do think that Cincinnati yesterday had a very pointed target of going after their nickel corner. They were trying to get that nickel yes. corner in matchup situations, yeah. and it was advantage Cincinnati, and other teams are going to follow suit. All right, more I on this later. Leave, I, I needed them to leave Molly up there. And, you know, yeah, look at the Catwoman. She looked like Catwoman in those glasses. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. I just wanted to say that. <laughs>